Today I'm at a park that was recently recommended to me. It's Prairie Wolf Park in Caledonia. This park was established to preserve a bit of history for this area and that at one time wolves roamed freely here. Now there are paved and natural trails to explore within this 45 acre park. And while there may not be any wolves to see, there are plenty of wildlife to be on the lookout for. So let's go exploring. So anytime you're dealing with the sun, whether it's bright full sun or hazy sun, you wanna make sure that you're not necessarily shooting directly into it because it will blow out your image. So what I like to do is block it somewhat with the trees. So instead of shooting directly, you have some branches that are in the way here, and then you can still get this, the effect of the sun on the landscape itself without having this blinding light shining directly into your image. Using the branches then to block the sunlight, you also add framing to your shot. So instead of just having ground and sky, you have some of the branches coming back into the shot and adding a sense of interest as well. So it's a hazy day here in Michigan. I mean, what else to expect? It is Michigan, the weather changes all the time but it's really hard to work with when you're shooting infrared. So I'm having to adjust to that. And part of that adjustment is looking for high contrasting areas, kind of like this path here. So you have a lot of darks and a lot of lights that are gonna show up. I like to take shots of paths or trails, especially if they go into the woods because it draws the viewer into the shot and it makes them curious about what's around the next corner, what's further down the path, what are they gonna see along the way. And if you can have like a tree arching over the path or some of the branches overlapping the path, then that also shows part of nature coming into your shot and it helps to draw the viewer all the more into your image. talked about tom trees before and shooting trees of interest that have a little bit of character to them and here's a perfect example this one is barely hanging on to life and it's half fallen over the path but there's some interest in it because of the broken parts the fact that this is hanging on to life just barely and the highlights are on the broken limbs adds more interest to the image I've talked about finding the character in a place, in a location that you're at and shooting details and looking for things that may make some location look better. So this area right here is intriguing because it's green, but not necessarily the most attractive looking. So what I'm looking for are highlights where I can shoot close-ups of just small little areas to show off the area in its best light. So I'm looking for things that give me high contrast, whether in light and dark or textures. I spotted these plants growing up here and it's just enough contrast against the skyline to intrigue me. Plus you've got the new growth on them as well. You can see the buds starting to sprout so that's gonna be something that I'm gonna take a picture of. So for this particular image, I wanna convey a sense of depth as well as showing off the new growth. So I'm gonna have one stalk in the forefront that's in focus, and then the rest I'm gonna have out of focus in the background. But it draws your eye in deeper into the image, and it gives you a sense that there's more going on than just what's, what you're seeing in the foreground. And also there's a contrast between the, the ground itself, the background trees, and then the sky. So you also have these three layers going on beyond just the image of the subject in the forefront. While well, everybody with a manicured lawn doesn't want to see these in their yard, out here in nature it's a different story. Using black and white I can show appreciation for this plant in the texture, in the form, 
and by combining it with the stalks next to it, there's a contrast again in texture, in shape, in size. So you use all these components to create your composition. As you can see behind me, the sun is starting to break through the cloud cover and it's starting to come through the woods too. And it's shining on the plant growth down here. So I'm gonna try and capture that light on some of these plants. When I go out for nature hikes, it's not always about taking pictures. Sometimes it's about using my other senses, like hearing. There's all different birds that are vocalizing. There may be frogs croaking. There may be rustling in the undergrowth. You don't know what kind of critter that is. There's also the breeze blowing through the trees. There's also your sense of smell that you can use to determine what plant life you're smelling because it's quite fragrant, especially in the spring and summer. I talked about having to crouch down to get images. And here we go again with new growth at the base of old growth. This is something that really captures my attention. Plus, you, again, you have the contrast of textures and lighting. The base of that trunk is in shadows, whereas the the new growth is highlighted by the sun, and even surrounding it, you have some highlights on different things growing in the ground too. Trees are one of my favorite subject matters to photograph, but coming in a close second are clouds. And the sky has cleared up just enough to give us some cloud formation in the background. So I'm gonna do a landscape shot. Now remember, we talked about shooting trails and pathways and kind of shooting them at an angle and including other things in your shot for a good composition. So here you have the path coming in from the left. You have some growth in front and on the sides and in the background. And then you have the patch of blue sky above. So that's gonna give me some contrast when shooting an infrared. you're outside taking photographs, don't feel like every image has to turn out. It's all a creative experience of experimenting with locations and textures and lighting. The main ingredient is to be outside in nature and enjoy it just as it is. Prairie Wolf Park is part of the Gaines Township Parks and Trails System. For more information about this park, check out gainstownship.org. Thanks for exploring with me.